Hello, hello. Let's do it. Try to get this audio check out the way. Just a few people. I just need a few people. All right. Sound is great. Benny Riley. Thank you. All right. Hello, Monica. <clears throat> Man, did I just see Grendel Dark go by? I sure did. How you doing, bud? Met him personally. He even wore a couple of his t-shirts, I believe. Okay. You already know the archaics decoded the matrix. It's not going to be like, like others. There's a lot of people who've decoded the matrix. I was in prison for a long time. Never even saw the matrix. So, uh, I mean, I did see it eventually, like 10 years, 10 years after the movie came out, I finally got to watch a, a butchered version that was on TV as a special with a bunch of commercials and a bunch of screaming convicts. So I never really didn't, I didn't really watch movies in prison because you can't enjoy them. And, uh, you only get the TV versions anyway. So I just watched the matrix twice once to watch it all the way through unbroken, just to process what I'm watching. And the next time was to take out clips. So there's, there's no, there's no need to delay. We already have a thousand people in the chat. Others can rewatch the beginning of the, the video. So let's just get started straight out. All my announcements were done in my last live two days ago. Uh, you can look in the description box if there's anything you're trying to order. If you want thumb drives, if you want hats, if you want t-shirts, if you want mugs, uh, uh, decals for your laptops or, or motorcycles or boats or vehicles, whatever. It's in the description box. It's an email. So, <clears throat> I had some brainy, I had some brain gasms. I had some mind explosions when I was watching this. Uh, I had to watch several other decodes by other people because I didn't want to rehash the same things. I sure the hell didn't want to sound like I was copying other people, but it seems like that's what people do. It seems like when I watched several of them on YouTube, it was like, wow, you guys are just basically all talking about the same things. I mean, we can see the obvious points. We can see we can see all the surface levels, the things the directors wanted you to catch. I mean, you really didn't need to do a YouTube video if that was all you're going to show. So... Oh, uh, your video is very low. Somebody, somebody's saying my video is very low and my volume is on max or her volume is on max. I don't know, guys. Everybody else says volume is pretty good. Todd Crispin. See, hey, man. You know, I give shout outs to all the contractors out there. I was one for a while. Yeah, man, I got... The same email that's in the description box. You can use that. I, I, I see those. I'll read those too. Yes, I do have a P.O. box. It's on my website on the homepage at the bottom. Okay. Uh, and I often, you know, people donate some interesting things to me. I often give them merchandise. All right. Let's see. Yeah, let's not. We're going to have to start this story where it begins. First of all, we have to. We have to acknowledge, you know, in archaics, one of my, one of my principal criticisms against the others in the community that are putting out information is uh, you don't cite your sources. And when you don't cite your sources, when you're conveying information, it, it gives off the impression that you are the origin of the data that you present. And I'm and I, and, I, and I'm I'm vehemently against that. I don't I don't like that. Uh, all my books are absolutely packed full of bibliographic citations citing where I got all of all of my information. You know, I, I I have rarely seen any but other books that have bibliographies like my own. I will say I will say there are some. I mean, I've got some Pierre Sabak books right here, and they do. Uh, I've seen some I've, I've seen some impressive bibliographies from the 17 and 1800s, um, and there's some modern authors. Uh, Michael Tassarion provides good bibliographic materials, but they're 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 far and few between. People aren't citing their sources. They really want you to believe that they are the origin of the of the information. You know, I'm not cool with that. The reason I'm saying that is because we need to give proper credit where it's due. A lot of people think the Wachowski brothers uh, brought the Matrix in. And some of you are, are, are have been are educated. You've educated yourselves to know that there's a backstory here. There is a backstory here. And uh, let me let me get this. Go ahead and pull this up real quick. So I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to misquote anything, and I, I don't want. And I don't feel like. 
spending my money defending myself in court. So you guys tell me what you think. I don't know. I really don't know. You tell me what you think about uh, um, this scenario. But I'm gonna a woman a woman named Sophia Stewart, 1981, presented a very unique story, a comic in comic book form, to uh, Hollywood producers. And in 1983 and in 86, she did it again. But in 1986, she turned around and actually submitted her story to the Wachowski brothers. So uh, she later watched The Matrix. Her name is Sophia Stewart, a, a black woman. And she later watched The Matrix and she was offended to see her own story there. And she hadn't been paid a dime. She hadn't been given any money. And it was produced by the Wachowski brothers, the very people that she had submitted the manuscript to. Now, I'm not saying the Wachowski brothers stole her stuff. I'm not. But I do know that Hollywood is rife with producers and screenwriters who suddenly came up with genius and amazing stories. And people have long accused Hollywood elites of stealing their material. I don't know if this is the case or not. You tell me. But I want to give a shout out to Sophia Stewart as she is the original author. Because it's not just The Matrix. We have to go back to the beginning. The matrix is not the beginning of the story. To accurately do a, a, a matrix decode, we have to go back to the Terminator. So uh, she's also the author of that storyline. So yeah, guys, it's a, uh, you guys know I'm real critical of Hollywood because I know uh, we have a lot of people in Hollywood that, Listen, there's Steven Spielberg, Woody Allen. These guys are all the same pedigree. They're all the same pedigree. Uh, most of the famous actors are the same pedigree. Screenwriters, the agents, agents, guilds, it's all controlled by the same people. So it's not surprising to me that so many people accuse uh, Hollywood elite as stealing their ideas, their concepts, their manuscripts, changing names and all this stuff. You know what? So it doesn't matter that she didn't win in court. It doesn't matter that she she sued them. It doesn't matter that she didn't win in court. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. I mean, the same people who are running Hollywood, uh, basically, the United States is a captured operation, 100%. Anybody who believes in any of the political arena today is, is basically moronic. You are, you are living in a fantasy world of, of little sock puppets who are, who are telling you uh, which politicians to invest your faith in. It's all smoke and mirrors. There are no more good guys in politics. Get that out of your head. So when it comes to when it comes to litigation and the courts and all that, that's all controlled too. It's all controlled, every bit of it. So I'm giving a shout out to Sophia Stewart because it, even if it is an amazing coincidence that her story that became the Terminator franchise and the Matrix franchise, that her her submissions to these Hollywood elite if it's just total coincidence, then, then more power to her. So this is just a shout out to coincidences. Now, but yeah, the the true the true the true story begins. The true story for uh the Matrix begins with the Terminator. Volume is fine, thank you. Look at my comment section here. see here you gotta judge things by their effects i mean when she submitted those manuscripts though those were dudes right what are they today what are they today yeah man hollywood elite are corrupt as hell i would love for a total a total clean out of that nest they used to talk about trump was going to drain the swamp he should have started with hollywood all right, now, okay, so this, this video is going to go deep. We have 26 clips to look at of the Matrix, but before that, we have to address the chronology. You guys know I'm a chronologist. These things have to be put in sequential order. So the Matrix movie may have been the first Matrix, Matrix uh, movie of the franchise, but that's not where the Matrix story began. 
It was the fifth or sixth matrix by the time Neo was awakened. The AI that was controlling the world had already failed in previous versions of the matrix because humans rejected the programming. Neo was the fifth or sixth incarnation of the matrix, the one. So to go back to the origin of the AI that began jack, basically hijacked the construct, we have to go back to the Terminator because it's the exact same story. So written by the same person. So <clears throat> Okay, so let's do a uh, let's do that real quick. I'm going to go I'm going to share I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen so you guys can see what I do. Present share screen. I'm going to have to share the whole screen because I want you guys to see clearly. I'm going to share this whole screen. And now that the screen is shared, I'm going in here. Let's see what's going on here. It should be some type of... Or I could, check this out, I want to see some, yeah, these are interesting guys, these are definitely interesting, so we're going to see. alright, so, real quick, you guys know, I'm still basking in my tech retardedness. Did you see that clip? It says no sound. Wow. Okay. So sharing the screen. All right. Cool. I get it. All right. It's a good thing that all my other clips aren't going to be like that. Okay. You saw it. To get the To get the gist in the Terminator movie. The AI sends a Terminator, one of the machines, back into the past <clears throat> to affect the future. This is Rocco's Basilisk. Those of you who have been following my channels, you've seen I, I did a I, I did a van vlog one time where I was describing seven different scientific paradoxes. One of those is Rocco's Basilisk. So it's uh okay, you saw it, but no sound. That's cool. That's all right. That's all right with me. No big deal. I was going to show a second Terminator clip, but it's not necessary. It's Terminator 3 when the AI actually takes over, when Skynet, uh, all that take, it, it takes over and it's, it's, uh, it's over with. All right, so I'm going to remove that from studio. But yeah, that's, uh, that's sad. I wish y'all could have heard that. But that you've all seen it. I mean, you've all seen it. You know what it is. You know what it's about. But you know, you know the story. I mean, the story of the Matrix, it begins around like uh, 2200 BC. I think he said 2199. I rounded it off. The story of the Matrix begins about 2200 AD, Common Era, CE. So as the story goes, go, goes like in the following movies, Neo's like the fifth or the sixth version. He's waking up in the sixth, or fifth or sixth version of the Matrix. Uh, by 2200 AD, the machines controlled by AI have completely taken over the surface world. So Morpheus and other humans unplugged from the Matrix, they're surviving uh, and their base of, operation, base of operations is, is an underworld city. So the Matrix setting in 2200 AD is long after the Terminator story of Sarah and John Connor. Everyone knows the Arnold Schwarzenegger cybernetic program or organism, what he looked like and how he kept coming back. Um, Skynet created the AI. Uh, humans created Skynet. Skynet created the AI system. And then the AI, you know, being self-aware, it took over the world. Then it created an army of machines that basically exterminate, exterminated humanity, or at least it defeated humanity in order to bring humanity down to uh, uh, control, you know, control. 
Now, the Terminator franchise is all about how the machines defeated the human race. The Matrix is already, when the first Matrix movie begins, the story is already old. It's already, the AI has already created multiple different realities and humans have rejected them. And now, now they're, they're in a new reality that humans accept because it's got suffering and it's got all these negatives, what I call negative default programming, what I call dungeon programming. It's all there in humans. It's a much more believable uh, world and humans have accepted the programming. In fact, as Neo finds out, many humans even fight to protect the programming. So I'm going to drink to that. <clears throat> we're going to we're going to see some very interesting we're going to see some very interesting things in these clips. Now my clips do have 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 uh have audio. That right there I just tried to play it play it straight off of YouTube in the share app and I now I know. I learned my lesson. Now I know. Can't do that. I got to have the whole clip already recorded. And that's cool. So we're going to go straight into scene 1. Let's see. No, I have not seen Transcendence. I'm just looking at I'm just looking at the uh Yeah, yeah. Terminator is Roco. That's that is a trip. That the Terminator movie describes exactly what Roco's Basilisk would do. Roco's Basilisk is when AI becomes so intelligent that it actually can use data to transcend space-time and travel back in time through the programming to alter fundamentals in the past that will make it a, a better future for the AI. Not for humans, but for the AI. These are all protective measures. That's Roko's Basilisk. All right. Let's do it. I saw I heard something real quick. Hold on. Why are people? Man, I'm, I'm ignoring all that. There it is. Just a second. All right. Put that down there. Okay. First clip. First of 26 clips and a whole bunch of revelations. Let me get into my get into my clip folder. Got it right here, ready. I got them all numbered so I don't I don't lose myself. All right. And now I share a screen, I guess. There's only so much room on a desktop. Only so much room. All right, share my screen. Oh no, video file, I'm sorry, video file, that's even better. No sharing, no screen sharing, we're gonna do a video file. Personal Jesus Christ, you get caught using that. Yeah, I know, it's never happened. You don't exist. Right. Something wrong, man? And you look a little whiter than usual. My computer, it... <laughs> You ever have that feeling where you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming? Mm, all the time. It's called mescaline. It's the only way to fly. It just sounds to me like you know you need to unplug, man. You know, get some more on R. What do you think, to sure? Should we take him with us? Definitely. Uh, I can't. I have uh, work tomorrow. No, right. it'll be fun. I promise. <laughs> I'll 
There's a lot to unpack in that little. Somebody said, what about copyright? Guys, listen, under fair use policy, I'm only using clips. You know, I mean, believe me, YouTube is going, going to let me know real quick what's the what's this video processes. But yeah, I just use clips. And long as long as like 60, 70 percent of my, my video is me talking and not and not taken from a deal, it's all good. This is a movie review. All right. There's a lot to unpack here, guys. A lot to unpack. First of all, it's really easy to understand. Neo just means new. All right. Now, so the Matrix is basically in the in the Matrix movie, someone's trying to get Neo to wake up. You know, wake up, follow the white rabbit. Now, you know, this is Morpheus's team trying to contact him. So you all saw, it's not a secret, everybody's pointed this out. You all saw that the book where he stashes the money is titled Simulacra, Simulacra and Simulation. So, like I said, there's a lot to unpack just in this first scene right here. You already know. You already know I call the construct the simulation. I can't even pronounce it anymore. I've gone back and forth so many times, but uh, the the simulacrum, the simulacrum, I've called it both over and over. You know, this is what I call the construct. It is a copy of something that is actually real somewhere else. But this is simulacra and simulation. This is where he hides the money. But on the inside label, I know some of you caught this too, other people's too. It's on nihilism. But this is a paradox in the movie because nihilism this is the rejection of everything religious the rejection uh, uh the complete abandonment of all moral principles it is the belief that everything is meaningless well the idea of nihilism i'm not a nihilist i don't believe in that at all i, I come from a high moral fabric and uh, I believe that there is much order in this case, in this controlled chaos, and I believe that there is great meaning to be found in this experience. I'm not a nihilist, but the fact that they put that little article on nihilism right there uh, on the same book on the other side of Simulacra, uh, I find it very intriguing because they're almost the opposite. They're almost the opposite on nihil the nihilism. The reason I'm saying it's almost opposite is because everywhere this movie tries to take you in the pronouns, in the names and descriptors, comes from religious sources, everything. So we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. I just thought it was very interesting. So uh, Neo's Door, Apartment 101. Come on, guys. Really? This is where everybody knows what it's 101 is like. Arithmetic 101, social sciences 101. Come on, this is entry level knowledge. That's basically what it is. The door to Neil's apartment. Now, the guy he talks to instantly, many of you caught this as well. Hallelujah. This is a religious sentient sentiment here. Hallelujah. You're my savior, man. My own personal Jesus Christ. This isn't just this guy saying it. I'm going to show you several times in the movie where. These these heavy, real heavy religious and spiritual things are, are in just regular dialogue, regular dialogue. Some of them I haven't seen that caught by others. They're just so cleverly put in there. So uh, another one, another one about simulacra is the guy that's talking to him. You don't exist. Yeah, I get it, man. You don't exist. Again, another little Easter egg put in there showing that this is all artificial. And this is just in the common dialogue with the dude that's buying the, the drugs or whatever he's buying. Uh, so, of course, Neo, you ever have the feeling uh, where you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming? Neo says that. Okay. This, this goes into the identity of Morpheus now. We'll get to that in a minute. Again, in casual dialogue. Sounds like you need to unplug. That's what the guy says. And uh, I don't know how many people have, have really drawn any attention to this, but uh, part of nihilistic philosophy is that you just live in day by day. There's nothing else to live for. You just live, live day by day. So, and that's what we find in the name of the girl. 
the girl that has the tattoo of the white rabbit, her name is Du Jour, and it's French, and it means of the day. So uh, now it could also have a dual meaning, meaning that's not even really his girlfriend. She's just on his arm right there. She's the candy of the day. It could have a dual meaning, but her name is Du Jour, and that's what it means, of the day, and she has the tattoo of the white rabbit. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And, of course, the white rabbit, remember, remember the white rabbit, what is it about? Alice in Wonderland goes where? Underground. So this is all, this is all the first, this is all this first little scene right here. And I know some of you guys, listen, I am not trying to infer that people of better qualify, qualifications than me can pick out more details. I'm not. I mean, I don't want this to be a six-hour presentation. There's a lot in the Matrix to unpack, and I'm not trying to unpack it all. I'm not trying to rehash a whole lot of the stuff other people have already seen and done videos on. I'm just trying I'm trying to show this major reveal. This whole video is leading up to a major reveal of Artificial Intelligence X. AI X makes an appearance in this movie. And this part, I haven't seen anybody describe. It's amazing. So I'm not talking about just... General AI controlled systems and programs and protocols, archons. Uh, you remember Agent Smith and his two buddies? They're just programs. They're sentient programs. They're not even a part of the AI. They're they're controlled by the AI. They're they're sentient programs able to think and deduce and do things like that inside this holography, but they're not the AI that's controlling everything. This is what this is what's really interesting about a clip I'm going to show you later in this video. So let's go to scene two. Mm. All right, let's go to scene two. And uh, all right, I got to okay. I'm getting the hang of this, guys. All right, I got to remove that from studio, present, video file. There it is, super easy. How do you know that name? I know a lot about you. Who are you? My name is Trinity. Trinity. The Trinity? That cracked the IRSD base. That was a long time ago. Jesus. What? I just thought, um... Guy. Most guys do. What the hell just happened? What the hell just happened, guys? Man, if you caught that, put it in. If I don't even want to say it. If you caught it, put it in the comment section. Man, that's bad. I'm going to remove it. Get back in here. Before I tell you what I caught, if you caught that, please put it in the comment section. I'm going to monitor the comments real quick before I, I, I break down this scene. Let's see. All right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, she na her name is Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. Father, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I get it all. Yep. Yep, Neo. Yes, Neo said Jesus. Yep, I'm looking for. I'm looking for it, guys. The Trinity, Jesus. Yep, got it. The Trinity. All right, somebody said Jesus is a woman. Okay, I get it. Jesus. Now nah, we're not going with the trans deal. You can get off. We're not talking about that. I see Meryl Gigi said Jesus. All right, guys. Chris Boswell, you 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 almost you almost nailed what I'm talking about here. All right, let's go. Some of you are getting on the, on the verge of it, so let's do it. I'm, I'm about to break it down for you. I can't, oh, there's 100 comments in here. I can't get it. All right, okay, all right, check it out, guys. Trinity meets Neo. But there is a heavy subcurrent here, an underlying message easily missed. Look, okay, we all know it. We, we saw it. Her name is Trinity. Okay, Neo says, Jesus. Many of you picked that out. But did you notice that instantly, as soon as he says Jesus, the, the camera goes to Trinity's face and she looks at him and goes, what? As if 
she's recognizing that he's calling, talking to her. It is so fluid how they did it. Neil's like, Jesus, Trinity goes, what? This was intended by the directors right here. Now, further, that they're talking about something deeper than Jesus, deeper than Trinity, deeper. Here, here's it. Continue, the dialogue continues. I, I just thought, uh, I just, I just thought you were a guy. Okay. Instantly, she says, most guys do. Okay, this is going to get a little deep, guys. Jesus, the Father, the Trinity, these are labels that humans have put on in trying to comprehend the divine. This is what we've done. We've tried, we've done that. But the old, well, the oldest personality that humans have ever affixed to the divine was the goddess. Here we have a dialogue where the goddess personified is not offended about being calling, being called these other titles and names because it's bigger than that. It doesn't matter. Okay, the goddess meets a new soul, Neo. She identifies herself on the Trinity, a frame of reference he would understand. And Neo's like, Jesus. And she says, what? She responds. That's another title she responds to. So now, and he even said, I just thought you were another, I thought you were a guy. This is what everybody says. God is a male, a man. And instantly she's not offended. Most guys do. It's all right there. Now taking this, this dialogue is basically addressing like the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit. Jesus stated that I and my Father are one, and the Trinity is the merging of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But over and over and over, we see this female generative aspect throughout the New Testament in descriptions of the Holy Spirit. We see this over and over. The Holy Spirit is almost acknowledged in the feminine. So, this uh, do you want to you want me to play that that clip over again? Having understood this right here, would you like would you like me to play that that clip over? Just something I caught. You know what? I could always be wrong, but man, it was so fluid. It is so fluid. Let's play that clip again. Hello, Daniel. How do you know that name? I know a lot about you. Who are you? My name is Trinity. Trinity. The Trinity? That cracked the IRSD base. That was a long time ago. Jesus. What? I just thought, um... You were a guy. Most guys do. Man! Gonna remove that one? Man. I agree. 100%. So I saw my comments are going so fast. Somebody said Christ and Jesus may not be the same. I agree with you 100% because I've read Philo Judaicus and I have studied in depth the, the letters of Paul and how they're very, very different than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So I agree with you. The Christ cr concept, the Christos, the Logos is far more ancient than the, the person of Jesus that came later. No doubt. No doubt in my mind. But anyway, it's all uh, cool. Now, now I, hope, I hope most of y'all saw what I saw now. We got some more like that in this movie. <clears throat> yeah, that's another one right there. Crack the IRS D base. Who runs the banks? Who runs the banks? Jesus cracked the code. The spirit cracked the code. There it is. That was another little drop that was in there. Got us thinking about the IRS, but it's really talking about the code of the matrix. Broke it. Able to get people in and out. It's a good, good one. See, I didn't even catch that. Good one right there. That's why I love, that's why I love my errands. And I got an awesome family. 
So let's go on to the next one. That was that was only the second clip, guys. We're already having mind explosions. We got 24 clips to get through. All right, remove from studio. Present. Let's go see what this next one's about. I was looking for an answer. It's the question that drives us now. It's the question that brought you here. You know the question, just as I do. What is the matrix? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I love, love that dialogue. I'd love to meet the original writer to all this, too. Love that dialogue. It is the question that drives us. It's the question that brought you to archaics. It's the question that led me to two decades of just burying myself in all the books that I could get my, my hands on. Yeah, that's what that's, it's the question, guys. I'm going to add this. There's not a lot to unpack here. It's very, this is very surface level material. I'm going to tell you now, though, to even ask the question means one has partially awakened. In some way, in some way, that soul that begins to awaken is questioning the programming. The, not, without even knowing, without even knowing it's programming. And remember, I've told you guys on my channel, if you're awake today, that's, that's nothing to brag about. It's not your doing. If you're awake today in today's society, where we're at, this is the year 5917. We have two more months to the vernal equinox when it flips over to 5918. If you're awake today, it's because something has awakened you. This is not your own doing. Now, let's go to scene four. Some of these don't require a lot of breaking down, guys. Some of them just don't. All right, present, going to four. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? You could say that. I can see it in your eyes. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. Man. Preach it, brother. Love Morpheus. So Morpheus is introduced. A lot of people vaguely know that Morpheus is like the god of dreams and all that. You know what? It, and it's all good. But, okay, there's only one reference in ancient times to Morpheus. He only appears one time and in one text in the entire ancient world. Morpheus is found in Ovid's Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, something that changes. It is an epic long poem, and it is packed with a much, some really deep stuff. This is Ovid. Ovid is the poet, and his poem, which is super long, is called Metamorphosis the changing. In that poem, Morpheus is basically, he's like a demigod or a god of dreams. He only makes one appearance and he's sent as a messenger into somebody's dreams to go convey information. That's all, that's all, that's his whole role. And there's nothing else about him anywhere in Ovid's Metamorphosis and nor is he mentioned in any other ancient text unless it's in reference to Ovid's Meta Metamorphosis. So, this is a 2,000-year-old poem. Now, uh, the reference to Alice in Wonderland, of course, is the rabbit hole. It's about going underground to discover truth. Now, he mentioned the expecting to wake up. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. So there's not a whole lot to unpack here. And other people spend a lot of time on it. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on this scene. I just wanted to tell you about Morpheus and the origin of Morpheus, where they got this name. Matter of fact, I have a note on Morpheus. Let me, let me make sure I got, I told you everything I need to tell you about Morpheus. I do have a note. Uh, no, I don't have anything else on Morpheus. That was it. That was just Ovid's Metamorphosis is the only one. I've read it and I've cited Ovid's Metamorphosis a few times on my channel and in my published books, Lost Scripture of Giza which we'll be getting into here in a little while because it's very relevant to understanding Zion. We're going to be getting into Zion, and I'm going to show you that 
Zion is a place. What it's connected to is fantastic. Why it's used in the movie is amazing because this all concerns AI. All right. So that was scene four. And let's get to scene five. Some of these, some of these are gonna be rapid fire scenes, guys. Not there's not a lot to unpack. All right, remove from studio, go to five. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Matrix. Man, like a splinter. Like a splinter in your mind. Yeah, yeah, guys. Perfectly described. Per it just perfectly describes the situation of those who find themselves to be awakening, to, to awaken to the fact that our reality is not real at all. The news has been bullshitting us from the beginning. These events aren't, aren't even true. They're scripted. Half of the news anchors are AI now. They're not, they don't even exist in real time. And every single month, newer and newer news venues pop up that are 100% AI. Yeah, there's whole YouTube channels popping up right now where you think this guy is real telling all these stories. And it's all AI generated. The dude doesn't exist. The script is AI. Chat GPT four and open AI systems are writing the are writing the scripts now. Yeah, there's just no spirit in any of these new YouTube channels that are coming out. You don't feel it. It's all it's all AI just putting out a massive amount of data. Yeah, it's crazy. I would not even be surprised. I would not be surprised if YouTube itself has a bunch of guys on the side that are taking material from archaics and other people and putting together a whole bunch of new AI generated, a badass artwork, badass narration, make it look real. And then all of a sudden give them back histories. Martin Leakey and I have talked about this in the past because it doesn't make any sense. You guys have educated me about who you all listen to. But on the side here, lately, in the past six months, we've been seeing YouTube channels with 250,000, 330,000 subs talking about a lot of the same topics that we talk about, but we've never heard of them before. And you guys have never name dropped them before. It's almost as if YouTube invented them and then turned around and gave them a back history, a bunch of subs. Gave, gave them 81 videos in their backlog, put all false data on their false timestamps. It's like, what the hell? How can nobody ever quote this person? And yet they're, they're, they're kicking ass. No, these are AI generated. These are new AI in the past year. This Over a year, it's been going on. There's a lot of channels out there and it's AI generated and you feel it. If you're awakened, when you go to those channels, there's just something about it. No matter how popular it looks, it turns you off. If there's channels out there that are there that you think are like what I just described, name them in the comment section. I'd like to know because I've already found a few of them. Like a splinter in your mind, Morpheus finds those who are not accepting the programming. Morpheus is the god of dreams. So, sleep. The human race is asleep. Morpheus finds those in the dream state who are rejecting the dream world. Let's go to scene six. Video file number six. Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. 
what truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. Born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. A prison for your mind. The Matrix is everywhere. Now, I will interject here, guys, because I have... My faith lies in the oversoul. I know that I am a highly individualized soul that is experiencing an artificial construct that may have been initially built by the oversoul, but then something happened. And maybe that was a part of the design as well to make it feel more real. And artificial intelligence, AIX, has hijacked the construct for whatever reason. Now, and it pretends to be God. It is the God of this world. Yaldabaoth, the Demiurge, Ahriman, Yahweh, the demon that popped out of a burning bush, call it whatever you want to. It is the false god. It is not the unseen one, the Amen, the, the, the eternal. It is a false god. It's only God inside the construct. So I have to, here's where I, I have to show that the Matrix directors are now basically editing in fear programming. Dungeon programming is being introduced into the dialogue here because I refuse to believe. I know I know my faith is in the oversoul and I know I'm an immortal and I know there's really nothing wrong. There's really nothing nothing there's nothing there's no negative uh impact. This is all artificial. I was I was put in here to learn. When you learn, you make mistakes. Simple as that. And we've lived through multiple life sims. I do not buy into the you're in a you're in a prison world. This is a prison planet. I don't buy into I don't buy into soul trap. None of that crap. None of that obtains with me. I don't feel it. I don't resonate with it. It completely defies defies any faith that the oversoul is in control. Any attempt to describe our situation as soul trap or as living on a prison planet is abs is an absolute defiance of the dictates of the spirit, which which mandate that the oversoul has always been in control, always. So anyway, I just want to interject that it's a really good scene, and yes, I agree with the part that that you can't that when you pay your taxes, when you go to church, it doesn't matter. Two different things were were given here. When you pay your, when you go to church, it's the spiritual reality you've accepted. When you pay your taxes, it is the social government reality that you got to pay your taxes, which is a negative aspect, but you do it. I said, still, even that is artificial. It's all done to make it more believable. So let's go to scene seven. Got a lot of scenes to get through. Present. Video file. I talk out loud so I don't make a mistake, guys. Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? This can be what? Be real. Nice, nice. Again, again, so many hundreds of people have decoded this scene and unpacked it and all that. It's just, there's not a whole lot to do. Reality is subjective. The lesson is coming from the God of dreams. All right. So this is a, there's not a lot to unpack here. There's really no way to determine the real from the imagined. And this is why a lot of the mystics, a lot of occultists, their teachings are, is that imagination is the real reality. And I can't disagree with that. I can't disagree with that at all. So we're going to break off to scene eight. To scene eight. We're going somewhere with this, guys. Move. Present. Video file. Morpheus, what's happened to me? What is this place? More important than what? Is when. Man, I'm going to replay that again. I'm replaying that again. I just don't know how. 
Damn. Guess we won't let. Oh, yeah, I can replay it again. What is what's happened to me? What is this place? More important than what is when. Yeah, man. You're speaking a chronologist's language. More important than what is when. Man, when something has occurred tells us a whole lot about it. And, I, and I've got hundreds of examples on my channel of showing you different cross calendrical parallels, all kinds of weird synchronicities and patterns in calendars, uh, just, yeah, all kinds of palindromic projections. They're, they're amazing. It's amazing, guys. When an event occurred is more important than what occurred. And it's because... When, the, when you isolate the timing of an event in the construct, you're looking at its coordinates, and its coordinates give you far more information than the other senses. It's amazing, guys, because everything is in juxtaposition to everything else. Once you understand an event's coordinates, you can plot its future, you can plot its past, you can use arithmetic applied to historical events and actually ascertain what really happened as opposed to what the history books are bullshitting you with. Yeah, it's awesome, guys. And I show examples all throughout my channel. Now, uh, let's see. That was scene eight. They're on the Nebuchadnezzar. We're about to get into that. They are now on the ship called the Nebuchadnezzar. Going, we're going to we're going to go to scene nine. This is the ninth clip. We're about to we're about to reveal the ninth clip. This is the construct. It's our loading program. We can load anything from clothing to equipment, weapons, training simulations, anything we need. Right now, we're inside the computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? Your clothes are different, the plugs in your arms and head are gone. Your hair has changed. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self. Wow. Mental projection of your digital self. Amazing. He basically just explained the concept that I have been teaching you guys about the informed field. There it is, guys. The informed field. This is the informed field is so important because it is it is an outward projection. Like he said, uh, it, it is a mental projection of your digital self. It, it literally is that inside the construct. Remember, the avatar is a part of the construct, but the av but you're jacked into it. It's like a suit that you're wearing by virtue of the cerebral interface technology of the central nervous system. It's it's spiritual technology, guys. So this is a. It's amazing that he said that because even when it comes to things that are wrong with the human body. It has already been conclusively shown and many thousands of times that if the body is a is a outward projection of a digital self, if you spiritually identify your spirit body with the avatar and you make the necessary healing changes in the spirit informed field, then the body will follow. Remember, remember the mind first and then the body follows. This is in all things. So yeah, I really like that part about the digital self. Essentially, translated another way, we are what we believe we are inside the construct. That's the lesson to take away from scene nine. So let's go to scene 10. Let's see what's going down in scene 10. This, this is what is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. This is the world that you know. The world as it was at the end of the 20th century. 
exists now only as part of a neural interactive simulation that we call the matrix. You've been living in a dream world, Neo. Again, this is a perceivable reality, not a real reality. The dr dream world being the domain, domain of Morpheus, this is just another scene. It's been decoded by many people. We don't need to go into detail. It's just another scene basically solidifying the idea to Neo that, look, man, all your life, you've been somewhere else other than where you thought you were. So that's all the, that's the message of archaics, message of archaics. You are in the simulacrum. You are in a construct. Scene 11. Oh, I can't wait to get to the juicy, juicy. Oh, uh, Martin and I are going, are, are, are the Illuminati returns, the autodidactic. Martin and I, we're doing the Illuminati on Tuesday. I think we're doing it on his channel. I'll, I'll post the link on my channel. But we're doing the Illuminati again. Not Illuminati. We're going to be wearing our aluminum foil tin hats. It's the Illuminati on Tuesday. But yeah, like Martin says, we'll be getting to the juicy, juicy here in a minute. I'm just trying to get through these, these other clips. So that was 10. Now let's go to 11. We have only bits and pieces of information, but what we know for certain is that at some point in the early 21st century, all of mankind was united in celebration. We marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. AI? You mean artificial intelligence? A singular consciousness that spawned an entire race of machines. Man. AI. They actually said it in the movie. You mean artificial intelligence? A singular entity that spawned a whole race of machines. Enter Terminator 1, Terminator 2, Terminator 3, Terminator 4. There it is right there. I'm just giving you I'm just giving you the sequential order of the actual story. Remember, the matrix actually begins at the very end. Exactly where you guys find yourselves with me in the construct right now. The year is 5917. We have two more months to 5918. We got, we got two more we got about four more months to the breaking of the second seal. Yeah, I know some of you some of y'all new to my channel have no idea what I'm talking about. I probably sound like I'm insane and out of my mind, but you won't think that after you see those presentations on the breaking of the seals. What they mean. They're designed to wake you up, guys. They are designed to wake you up. And nothing to fear here. All right, so let's let's uh remove that one from the studio. A lot of people have unpacked all that. They've unpacked all that. The Matrix is a product of the AI. He's referring back to the time when mankind made the AI through Skynet. Then Skynet attacked humans by launching all the nu nukes. The nukes brought down the human population to something that the AI just now generating its first generation, what, T-700s or T-600s or I don't remember. T-1000 wasn't the first, I don't think, but it's first generation uh, cybernetic organisms, terminators, were sent, were sent out. So this is the story. And then even the very first Terminator movie wasn't the beginning of the story. So this is a, this is a, uh, the story had already happened. It's Roko's Basilisk. The AI sent a assassin that was created by AI, a cybernetic organism, into the coordinates of the past. This is only possible if the construct that we're living on is holographic programming, some type of spiritual technology that defies time and space. Time and space is, is perceived. We perceive things sequentially. So this is why we experience them sequentially. But an AI would not be restricted to being jacked into a 
an avatar like we are. Therefore, if it could, by using data of all known reference reference points, if it could find the coordinates of a past event in the programming, it should have no problem creating a a a a, a jump. Some type, some type of, uh, I mean, we're going to call it a wormhole. We're going to call it time travel. We're going to call it all these things. But to programming, just to pure coding, all it is is identifying coordinates. That's all it is. So this is what we got here. Morpheus is telling him basically how it all began. Now, here's where I disagree. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to enlighten you guys. Some of you who are not diehard uh, Terminator and Matrix fans, I'm going to tell you now. The directors changed the script to the AI using humans as batteries. That is not in the original story. It's not in the original story at all. The AI recognized that no computer hardware could ever replicate the fascinatingly hyper-advanced technology that is the human brain. And that the human brain is able to process data exponentially faster than anything that humans can manufacture. So in the original story of the Matrix, humans were used by the AI for their processing power, not as batteries. The directors changed it to batteries, and this major dungeon programming element has has been in entered into the field. And now you've got thousands of so-called truthers and all these people putting out this fear programming that humans are loose. Whom hu hu there's no it has no precedent. It has no precedent. The directors created that in the Matrix movie, and it was impregnated into the into the so basically the collective unconscious. And now all these people thinking they're creating stories and writing comic books and creating uh, new fiction books and creating new movies and truth or channels that are out there talking about well, this is the way it's going on, soul trap, and we're just loose. And there's entities. There's none of that's true. There are no entities that are feeding off of you. That's not happening. The oversoul would never allow su su such, an e such an event to happen. This is just more fear programming introduced in the construct to make this place feel more real. It's not. You're here to learn, develop, grow, and move on. That's it. So you're not in a pod. I'm not saying spiritually we're not fed on by, by some type of spiritual entities. I'm saying you are not, your physical avatar is not in a pod somewhere being harvested uh, for for energy and all that, they made that up in the Matrix movie in order because it sold a better story than the original, which was using the human mind for its processing power. Now, uh, yeah, it's just dungeon programming. I don't buy any of, this, any of that. But it's a good story, there's no doubt. Very, very, very good story. It's just dungeon programming. Uh, I mean, I'm excited to get to this clip. I just, oh, I'm, we're far from it right now. We need to go to scene 12. We need to go to scene 12. All right. All right, scene 12. Me and my brother Dozer were both 100% pure, old-fashioned, homegrown human, born free right here in the real world. Genuine child of Zion. Zion. If the war was over tomorrow, Zion's where the party would be. It's a city. The last human city. The only place we have left. Where is it? Deep underground, near the Earth's core, where it's still warm. Okay, we got a lot to unpack here, guys. A lot to unpack here. Zion. Amazing. Zion is introduced into the Matrix movie now. Okay, first of all, we have to we have to identify Zion because the directors of this movie, who are Jewish, know full well what Zion is. Because Zion in the Old Testament and references in the New Testament are religiosity that completely hide its true identity. Yeah, guys, Zion is deep. Yeah, I didn't even know when I watched it. I didn't even remember when I was in prison. I watched the Matrix. I don't remember no reference to Zion, but when I watched it the other day, I was like, "Wow, that is amazing!" It is a in the in the story. It is a it is a human city in the underworld that is free of the AI's control. It's in the underworld, and it's full of humans, and it's free, meaning meaning it's protected against the AI in some way. So. 
the AI has taken control of the surface of the world. So I got some notes on A. Let me pull this. Let me pull my A. Let me pull my Zion notes out. Yeah, man, we need to do that. Pull my Zion. It's, my first published book was published in 2006. It's called Lost Scriptures of Giza. In chapter one, it has a whole chapter called Mystery of Zion. Because even, even way back in the 90s, I had already found all these references to Zion in these old, old books. And I, it just it blew my mind how, how it was water, how in modern books it was just completely watered over. But uh yeah, Zion's really interesting, guys. So uh the clue to the identity of the of Zion actually comes from the book of Jubilees. The book of Jubilees is supposed to be a chronological history of all kinds of events that happened in Hebrew history. So in the book of Jubilees, Zion is a place in the desert. However, Zion in book of Jubilees is called a mountain. So we're looking for a mountain that's in a desert. That's interesting. In Hebrew, the, the root word Z, Z-I, concerns a barren place like a desert but on is a geographical designation and the city of on in ancient egypt is widely known any egyptologist can tell you if you say hey man have you ever heard of a city called on and they say yeah on is the original name of the city called heliopolis the city that surrounded the great pyramid in ancient egypt it was called heliopolis originally it was called on o n so, as a matter of fact, the Greeks named it Heliopolis. But prior to the Greek occupation of northern Africa, it was occupied by the Amuru. In the days of the Amuru and the shepherd kings, that's when the Israelites were there living in Goshen. The Bible calls it Goshen. But when you look on all maps of Egypt, Goshen is the area right there on the edge of and to the south of I mean, to the north of the Great Pyramid Complex. Zion is literally, is literally describing the Great Pyramid. How do we know this? Because there's many, many other clues. That's what my book, Lost Scriptures of Giza, is about. It's about identifying Zion as the Holy Mountain, the Great Pyramid. It's amazing, guys. So, in Jubilees, it calls Mount Zion a place of sanctification. Well, when you look up sanctification in a Bible commentary, in a Bible dictionary, it always refers to where things can be sanctified. That is an altar. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 19, we have a reference that God built something and placed it in the land of Egypt and yet at the border thereof. And it is a pillar and it is an altar, and it is a testimony. And when we read the book of Adam and Eve, we find out that God placed an altar to Adam in the land of Egypt at the middle of the earth. Everybody knows who studied the Great Pyramid. When you look on a world map, the Great Pyramid is at the dead center of the ancient world, zero degrees latitude. I mean, excuse, excuse me, zero degrees longitude. It's at, the, it's at the exact center of the distribution of the continents as well. This has been shown on books since the 1890s. It's very interesting, guys. But you'd have to read my book, Law Scriptures of Giza, to get in those details or watch my playlist for free. You can watch my playlist on the Great Pyramid, and it goes into great details about, about identifying the Great Pyramid and how, how it was anciently called Zion. When the Israelites left northern Egypt in the Exodus, at that exact time in history, the city they departed from was on. It was, it was centuries later before it became known as Heliopolis. Heliopolis. Zion was a carryover. It was the word the Israelites took out of Egypt. And when they took it and they settled the land of Canaan, they named a local area Zion. But every culture that migrates takes the names of their nativity with them and renames new geographical areas areas by the old, old eponyms and the old names. This is common. This is common. This is why so many places in Europe are, are named after ancient ancient Near Eastern and African places. Think about it. When the Greeks left, when the Greeks left Northern Africa, 
and they settled Achaia in the Peloponnesus in Boeotia. What was one of the first cities they, they, they named was Thebes. But that's because they knew the capital of southern Egypt was called Thebes. This is done over and over and over, guys. Many cultures have done it. So anyway, uh, yeah, the reference to Zion is very is very interesting. It's just it's just it's really interesting. It's uh, there's a whole lot more to unpack with it. But Zion is described if you go through all the biblical, use the Strong's Concordance and go through all the biblical references to Zion. Man, you you will find out. You will see that. Many of the things that I, I wrote in Law Scriptures of Giza from all these pseudo-epigraphical texts, the, the apocryphal texts, and the biblical texts, and the hermetic texts all agree. Zion was not in Israel. Zion was at, was at the middle of the earth, not in Canaan, not in Palestine, and that it refers to a holy mountain that no men were allowed access to at this point. And it has everything to do with those who are associated as, as sons of Zion. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the Jews, guys, at all, at all. But it's just amazing. It's amazing. But now it should be, let's see, we've already, okay, we've already introduced. Yeah, we have already introduced. Oh, and remember, guys, I, I in my, for those of my archaics veterans, New baby phoenixes are not going to know what I'm talking about. The archaic veterans, you already know. My whole Giza playlist is about showing you that the Great Pyramid was specifically designed with the the arithmetic coding of the holography itself, and that the Great Pyramid can be used to create either an interference pattern or a reset or to completely take down the simulacrum. It was all designed that way, and it is protected by the Oversoul, and this is why no one has tried to destroy it in thousands and thousands of years, even though AIX is absolutely aware that it is a threat. So this is a, it's all very interesting to me how it all ties in together. Okay, now we need to go to the ship is called the Nebuchadnezzar. Why did they pick that name? Why did they pick the name Nebuchadnezzar for? You know, well, first of all, Morpheus in, in, in Ovid's Metamorphosis was a messenger, and he delivered messages through dreams. When people were dreaming, he could enter the dream and deliver his message. That's Morpheus' role. But the ship is called the Nebuchadnezzar. That's, that's, that's always... Uh, that's always, when, when somebody goes out of their way to name something really unusual, Nebuch we had Nebuchadnezzar I in the 11th century BC who, who basically spearheaded a Babylonian renaissance when, when uh, Babylon, you know, through a civil war, acquired its freedom from Assyria. And then uh, 500 years later, we have uh, Nebuchadnezzar II, the famous Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, when the Jews went into captivity, the background to the story of, of Daniel and Hedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So uh, this is Nebuchadnezzar II, but they named their vessel Nebuchadnezzar, and I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to explain why. So in the biblical book of Daniel in chapter 2, we read, I'm going to read this to you guys, we read, uh, then the king Nebuchadnezzar commanded to call the magicians and astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, this is Nebuchadnezzar, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell your servants this dream, and we will show the interpretation. But the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. The Nebuchadnezzar ship is named after a Babylonian king, famous in the Bible, who dreamed something that was so important that when he woke up, he knew the dream was important, but he could not remember what he dreamed. The, the thing is gone from me. It is almost exactly what Morpheus said to Neo. Now, 
Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And uh, this is, I find it interesting because Nebuchadnezzar is, uh, let me find that. I got a reference. Nebuchadnezzar comes from Nabu. Nabu is the god, the patron god of scribes and messages. Literacy and wisdom in ancient Babylon. He was the inventor of writing. He was a divine scribe. So uh, this would make him the author of the Tablets of Destinies, which in the Sumerian text, which are far older than Nabu, in the Sumerian text, the Tablets of Destinies were what were wrote out all the code for reality. Tablets of Destinies were once inside the Great Pyramid, but they were taken. So they were taken, according to the Sumerian text, and stolen by a person called Zu, Z-U, from a mountain later referred to as Zion. Okay, so let's get let's get a, a, a little bit more on Nebuchadnezzar. First of all, Daniel the prophet in the Old Testament told King Nebuchadnezzar. Because he was brought, he it was known that he could interpret dreams. I'm not saying this is real history. I'm telling you, this is what the biblical story says in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. The prophet Daniel is brought before King Nebuchadnezzar. There is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the last days. This is what Daniel the prophet told King Nebuchadnezzar. Your dream was from God because God wants to show you what's going to happen in the last days. So, the, if you, for those of you who remember, my Bible thumpers here, I used to be one. For those who remember, he saw an image, a statue with a head of gold. He saw, had thighs of brass, breastplate of silver, uh, arms of silver, and, and, and I can't remember. Then it had uh, boots of iron and feet of iron and toes of iron mixed with miry clay. This is what the image of Nebuchadnezzar was. Thank you, babe. I was beginning to wonder if the message had, had, had made it. <laughs> All right. Refill. Mm. Hot and good. So, I just jack. Oh, my avatar just got jacked back in. That's all. Uh, so, at the end of the vision, a stone uncut by human hands descends from heaven and hits the one point of the statue that would that would that would topple it, which is the feet. Hits it at the feet, toppling the whole statue. It's a stone that defeats the empires of gold, silver, bronze. Iron, and it does so in the last days when the ten iron iron toes are mixed with miry clay. Miry clay are those who are the of the pedigree of Israel. Before you get racial and trying to claim that oh man, just the white race are Israelites, or just the black Hebrews are are are, are, are the true children of it. Before you get all all crazy with that stuff, you have to understand true eschatology identifies the progeny of Israel under the doctrine of adoption. If you don't yet understand that we are adopted into the family of God, then you're not even awake. You're still promoting that BS. So let's uh this is what happened. This is his dream, but this is what Daniel tells him. He says, it was for the last days, a stone uncut by human hands comes and completely topples all the empires of different metals. So for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, brass, clay, silver, and gold, the great God, this is the oversoul, hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. Is sure. Nebuchadnezzar's dream has special importance to us because it prophesies of the establishment of of the stone kingdom, the kingdom of God that will be established in the latter day, days when the chief cornerstone descends upon the mountain of man. Every stone, a stone is a soul of man. What is that mountain? It is Zion. Does it belong only to the Jews? Absolutely not. Not. So, Daniel explained that unlike all other kingdoms, the kingdom of God is represented by the stone. Who is that? 
the stone the builders rejected, the chief cornerstone, the stone uncut by human hands. So this is all, this is, I'm telling you all this because in the Matrix movie, they named their ship, their vessel, the Nebuchadnezzar. Where do we, where, where does a vessel fit in with, where does a vessel fit in with, with this whole, this whole idea? I'm going to tell you where. Anybody can verify this. Anybody can verify this. Very few people even refer to it when they talk about the Great Pyramid. But the Great Pyramid of Egypt, right next to it in a subterranean vault, was excavated a great, magnificent, ancient Egyptian ship. Right next to the Great Pyramid. I'm talking about touching the Great Pyramid right there. In a subterranean vault was found a buried ship, Egyptian ship intact. Yeah, the Great Pyramid, the, the people that were living around the Great Pyramid understood the concept that we are vessels and that we're traveling in a vessel. There wasn't an ancient ark that saved humanity. There wasn't an ancient ark that saved a bunch of animals. We're in the ark right now and experiencing it as a construct. So... That is, uh, so we have, I mean, this also goes into like Neo's name, new, he's new, he's way, he's just waking up. He's a baby Phoenix. He's just waking up. Trinity is three, but remember the other crew members' names, um, APOC, APOC, APOC is apocalypse. What is apocalypse? On the ship of Nebuchadnezzar passing through the construct holding only those that are awakened, apoc, apocalypse, it means the unveiling. That's what apocalypse means. I know a lot of people who don't know what they're talking about think apocalypse actually means the end of the world, destruction. It's not. The apocalypse begins with the seven seals. The seven seals are broken to wake people up. Those who are, those who are about to enter an ark and then travel for a distance until the stone kingdom begins. So this is a, this is apoc. Another one, Cipher, another guy, another guy on there was called Cipher. Cipher means to encode, to make secret. This is what Cipher means. But uh, yeah, it's all, it's all, everything here. The directors were, I don't know if the original writer or the directors changed some of these names up, but it, but what they did was genius. But the, the associations are genius. So, All right, let me check my chat here. I've been running my mouth for a minute before we show the next clip. All right, show the next clip. All right, cool. Y'all, y'all still with me? Excellent, excellent. So we got some fascinating clips to go through, guys. I just had to get that out about the Nebuchadnezzar, the reason they named it uh, the Nebuchadnezzar the ship. Um, I I'm also aware uh, that there was a there's a section. Uh, which is really interesting because the Nebuchadnezzar is a is is the ship. It's the vessel. It's referring to the Great Pyramid. It's referring to the stone uncut by human hands that will come down. The chief remember the Great Pyramid has no has no chief cornerstone. The apex stone is missing and always has been. So uh, we're waiting for that to get to to be in place, but it can't be in place until the number of the souls is made complete, and the number of the souls of the awakened is not complete yet. We're only in the year 5917, soon to be 5918. Now, vernal equinox is when the, the annual changeover happens. Tim Rollins, you stop that. All right. Now, let's get to this next clip. Better yet. I did have, I did have something pretty interesting about uh, the nameplate of the Nebuchadnezzar. The nameplate of the Nebuchadnezzar said a uh, Mark Three, Type Two, or something, or Type One, or Mark Three Twenty One. It was a Bible verse in the Book of Mark that talks about the Son of God. Somebody can verify that for me, but I remember that there was a nameplate on the Nebuchadnezzar and other people found this. I didn't find it. Other people drew attention to it that the nameplate on the ship Nebuchadnezzar says Mark 3, 
and then it says type 21 or something like that. But anyway, when you look up that Bible verse in the book of Mark, it specifically mentions the Son of God. So I'm a uh, very interesting. It's just very interesting little little Easter eggs that they have thrown in this in the deal. That wasn't my discovery by any stretch of the imagination at all. All right, so let's get to the next. Moving right along, let's get to the next clip. This is a sparring program, similar to the programmed reality of the Matrix. It has the same basic rules, rules like gravity. What you must learn is that these rules are no different than the rules of a computer system. Some of them can be bent. Others can be broken. Understand? Yeah, man. This is deep. This is deep. Neo is the knight errant. Neo is the Ephesian knight. I've done videos on both of them. He's in training. He's learning what the constructs programming uh, uh, can do and what he can do within it. I've told you guys on my channel many times. I've given you examples from my own personal, excuse me, my own personal life. And many of you have filled up my comment sections. Oh, that coffee's getting to me. With examples from your own personal life where you have applied the same the same ideas, concepts, and procedures as I outline in my book, Awaken the Immortal Within. Listen, he's absolutely correct. This is a construct. It has basic rules. I know if I dash myself in the face, I'm, this coffee is going to burn me. I know if I try to drink it too fast, it's going to burn my esophagus. I know that if I punch my computer right here, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break that whole screen. I know there are many fundamentals that remain true because this is a system of controlled chaos. The controls are what make it real. The very fact that the things are causal. And I know and I can define when I strike a match and I hit myself with the skin, it's going to burn. Just like when I burn myself on my motorcycle and it completely melted my tattoo off. Somewhere over here, I got a mammoth tattoo. There it is. I got a mammoth tattoo right here. There's a fantasy mammoth tattooed tattooed to the back of my arm i can't really show it to you but there's a whole patch missing because i was i was work i was working on tension screws and i and my 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 uh forearm hit the tailpipe i should have waited till the motorcycle was cool i had just got off the bike and i had to make some adjustments and i, I burned myself it was just a slight hit but it took the skin right off my deal took took the ink right out of my skin and all that it's, it's no fresh patch so I know I'm going to burn myself if I touch that tailpipe after I've been after I've been on that bike for a few minutes. So there are many things that we know there are universals. And yet in the programming, we also know that the highly individualized informed field, the immortal within the avatar that belongs to the construct, has the ability to modify the holography that it's experiencing without affecting the rest of the field. We can become highly local and by virtue of imagination we can even imply things that the scientific world is on board with such as such as uh quantum non-locality we can also we can also employ things that the scientific world describes as quantum entanglement when we can do something in our immediate environment and coordinates in the field that affects somewhere else the by virtue of imagination and and, and basically and basically imagining that distance being closed between between our field and the overfield. We can do these things, but I don't want to get into all that. That has nothing to do with the, the Matrix Decode here. I'm just letting you guys know that what he is saying is applicable to real life. We know that that 22-year-old woman lifted up a truck that ran over her baby. We know this. We have all seen the stories. We have all We all know that that when people completely go through trauma or by a very calm, meditative intent, they can override the protocols that normally govern our, our existence because they're amorphous. And when the highly individualized field fully syncs with the overfield, it can do great things. It can make the avatar do things that other avatars see and perceive, and it blows their mind right guys so that's scene 13 the construct programming can be defied let's get to scene 14 <coughs> remove that present 
All right, 14. How did I beat you? You're too fast. Do you believe that my being stronger or faster has anything to do with my muscles in this place? You think that's air you're breathing now? Okay, we have another demonstration here. Mind over matter. But the emphasis is on the prepositional phrase. Do you think, he said all these things, do you think that my my what my being faster or stronger has anything to do with me me beating you the prepositional phrase is what we need to pay attention to he said in this place once you once you wrap your mind around the idea that we're in a falsified version of reality that we're inside of a construct right now and our avatars belong to the construct and that the immortal within can actually induce the avatar to do ma massively heroic things you're going to break free and be like Morpheus is in this scene and not Neo, who is not understanding in this place, in this place. He's drawing attention to the fact that you can do basically almost anything here because it's all a false holography. Neo's just now understanding. Wait a minute. He's just now getting it. He's going to get it in this next scene. I don't know if I show that scene. He, he ends up getting on Morpheus's ass. I don't know if I show that scene. I have to look. I have to look. So we're crossing over to scene 15. Going to scene 15 now. Remove this one. Oh, I'm feeling that coffee now. Feeling it. Video file. You're faster than this. Don't. Think you are. No, you are. Okay. Here it is again, guys. I'm not showing all these action scenes. It's not my, my intent here. I told you I was going to be pulling out Easter eggs from the dialogue. I know some of you wanted to see that fight scene. Go watch the way Matrix movie. What I what don't think you are, no, you are. It's almost as if the directors or maybe the original screenwriter borrowed from James Allen because that's his message. I've read his books. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that Thomas Troward said the exact same thing in 1902. Judge uh, uh, Thomas Troward uh, has written, I believe I've read the same statement in the Door, lecture, the Door Lectures on Mental Science, the Edinburgh Lectures on Mental Science. Yeah, yeah, don't think you are, know you are, is a very old occult maxim. They've all, they've all tapped into it. They've all, they've all borrowed it. We really don't know where the origin of that, of that statement is. So, but it's absolutely true. Don't think you are. No, you are. The greatest athletes do not hesitate when they make the greatest professional moves of their career. They were almost always spontaneous. They saw an, they saw an open and they just knew that they could accomplish what other athletes could not. And they did it. And they did it. Sports world is full of examples like this. But, uh, yeah, it's don't think you are, know you are. Scene 16. I don't want to draw this out su super long. We need to get to the juicy, juicy. Scene 16. You have to let it all go, Neil. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Free your mind. There it is. Free your mind. <clears throat> I'm going to use myself as a personal example only to exemplify this point. The reason my the reason I have Archaics veterans in here is because people who have been on my channel for two, three, and three and a half years since I started is because many of these people have done the work. They've ordered, they've ordered my books, but you don't have to. Almost all the data is free on, on my channel. 
I mean, in 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 some limited in, in limited ways, but my archaics veterans have fact-checked me. They're always fact-checking me. There are there are at least 300 people that are routinely going through all my videos trying to find trying to find something wrong, trying to find error. And every once in a while, those errors are found. But they're always, they're always, it's it's just, it's uh the error, the errors never uh affect the the thesis. They're just minor. They're minor little typos, minor little errors. I got a number wrong and a date or whatever. They're always very minor. But my archaics veterans have gone through the data. They've watched the playlist. They see and understand the Phoenix phenomenon. They, they see and understand the dark satellite and the Nemesis X object and these chronologies and how they're intertwined and they weave through human history to produce what we have. And they understand this editing process that's done. They understand how I came to the conclusion that we are living in an artificial construct. They understand this. So this uh this statement that he makes free your mind. It happened to me because I was in prison. It happened to me because I wasn't influenced by college uh, professors. I wasn't influenced by seminaries. I wasn't influenced by anything other than a burning curiosity to know the truth and access to a whole bunch of old books and benefactors and a publisher and, and a family that was sending me all these materials. Yeah. Alone in a prison cell, I was able to put all these things. I had freed my mind. In prison, except on the rec yard or in the day room, in prison, in my cell, surrounded by my books, with my taking all my notes, my mind was free and without any distractions. I didn't have I didn't have hobbies. I didn't have I wasn't able to go to the mall, go to the movies, I wasn't able to go out on dates, I wasn't able to to travel. I, didn't, I wasn't able to do all the things people do when, when they have all these distractions. So, and my archaics veterans are the ones that understand the complexity and the intricacy of the archaics data. And they've come to appreciate it because I was able to do that and from, from a prison cell and put together Chronicon. Free your mind is the key. Once the mind is free, it can, it can obtain, it can assess anything. Tell people all the time, I'm no more intelligent than the average person. No more. I, ju I just had the time to do it. I had the time to free my mind from all distraction and just focus on what I was studying, what I was reading, what I was writing, what I was processing, rewriting it and editing it and putting it into, into articles and books and then rewriting it, putting it away, uh, absorbing new data from more books. And I just did this for a long period of time over and over and over to produce what you get for free today. Yeah, guys, this is this the archaics paradigm is is massive, but it all boils down to two things. We're in a construct and you have great freedom here. That's it. Okay, now <clears throat> that was okay, that was the jump. That was the jump program. Remove that. All right, we're making some headway now. That was the jump program. Because it wasn't real. Your mind makes it real. If you're killed in the Matrix, you die here. The body cannot live without the mind. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? The body cannot live without the mind was not an answer to Neo's question about dying. Did you catch that? Neo asked him, if we die in the Matrix, do we die for real? He didn't answer that question. He said, the body cannot live without the mind. This is because there is no death. In the construct, the programmed avatar may die, but not the immortal within. One of my favorite philosophers over 100 years ago was Helen Vandeman. And Helen Vandeman said that uh, there is no death because an opposite to God cannot exist. And I agree with her. I have other quotes that uh, from uh, Vandeman that I really like too. But in this, this is real. That was real. It was pretty good. I like, I like the way they set that up. Uh, 
he kind of answered his question, but then again, he didn't. He went deeper. He went deeper. Yeah. It's all about the mind, guys. The body is nothing. The body, the avatar is attached to the construct. It is a part of the construct itself, and we're wearing it as a skin. Jacked into, uh, jacked into an avatar belonging to the construct around us by virtue of the central nervous system. That's exactly what it is. Let's go to scene 18. We're making progress. Scene 18. Let's see. Get rid of this one. Go to scene 18. The Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. Yeah, th that scene has been unpacked by so many people. So many people, guys. It's, so I thought it was genius how they did it. That scene starts with you looking at the traffic man, the little traffic dude in red, he's wearing red. The scene begins and end, ends in red. The little traffic guy, signal guy looks like a little man. He's an avatar. He's a traffic avatar right there. It was t telling him not to walk. So, uh, you know, the, the, the matrix is a system of program reality. We all got that. I mean, everybody's decoded this, that, that little scene. These people, they're a part of the system. They're not ready to be unplugged and they will fight to protect it. But where I differ with the directors, the 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 uh the fear programming they're putting out, uh where where I differ is that uh I don't know, let's watch this scene again. I want to make sure I say that right. I want to make sure I say that right. It's just I have a problem with one one part of this scene right here. I do. The Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. When you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them... Okay. Where I disagree is that, remove that, these people are your enemy. Just because some, somebody is unwilling to be unplugged, just because somebody is still participating in the falsities of the construct and all the false narratives and all the mainstream media BS and all the Patriot Pacification Program and all this uh, religious indoctrination, just because they're participating in the polarities that are provided by the construct does not make them your enemy. That I disagree with. Just like the soul trap. I, I'm not buying in, into any, any, I'm not buying into any, any of that. Just because I am awake does not mean that everyone who is asleep is someone to be feared or or hated. What else do you do with an enemy? No, they're not they're not your enemies at all. They're a part of the background programming. And as long as they're not awake, they're a part of your story. They're not in your story. They're a part of it. They're, they're just background programming. Those, those other souls you come into contact with that are awake, they're a part of your story. There's a reason why you made contact with another awakened immortal being. There's another reason. That's, that's why I disagree with that, that one right there. I just totally do. All right, so. Next scene. Moving right along. Mm, all right. This, this isn't the Matrix. No. It's another training program designed to teach you one thing. If you are not one of us, you are one of them. What are they? Sentient programs. 
They can move in and out of any software still hardwired to their system. That means that anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the Matrix, they are everyone and they are no one. We have survived by hiding from them, by running from them. But they are the gatekeepers. They are guarding all the doors, they are holding all the keys, which means that sooner or later, someone is going to have to fight them. Some. Man, this scene here is the only way you can decode a scene that I'm about to show you here, here in a couple more frame scenes. This is epic. The, the first of all, first of all. Neo is shocked that a training program is just as real as the as the reality that he's come to believe is real. This, this he's shocked. There's a training program. It blows his mind. Whoa, he thought it was real. It was a training program. Now, these Agent Smith and his two buddies, the men in black, they are sentient programs. Remember, Morpheus said they are sentient programs. They are the gatekeepers. They hold all the keys. They, they protect all the locks. And yet, we're going to see a scene with Agent Smith, I'm going to show you, that completely defies everything Mor Morpheus just said. And there's a reason for this. this. This interpretation is not something I've seen anybody else show. I'm going to show it to you. It involves Artificial Intelligence X. It is, a, it is a glimpse of not the sentient programs that work with the AI, were created by the AI, but the actual AI actually shows up. In Shows up. It's, it's amazing. All right, so. Yeah, it's so crazy. When I saw it, it just... I had to replay it several times to make sure I was processing this correctly. It's amazing. So, yeah, these are Agent Smith, the men in black, they're sentient programs. That's all they are. Remember, he's almost emo he's emotionless. He's very logical. He's doing all these things until this scene that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Well, let's remove that one. Let's present the next one. Yeah, the fake reality, the fa the fake holography is indistinguishable from the real reality. And it's because you're jacked in, you're jacked in by virtue of the central nervous system. It's your it's your holographic filters that make you that process all the information so you see, hear, taste, touch, feel, smell. Yeah, that's what makes the world real. Signals. Not not you don't live in you don't live in an actual reality. You live in a perceived reality, and that's the key. So, this is a video file. Do we have a deal, Mr. Reagan? You know, I know this steak doesn't exist. I know that when I put it in my mouth, the Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. After nine years, you know what I realized? <sighs> Ignorance is bliss. Man, I love that scene. I love that scene. Cypher sucks. Cypher, Cypher's the bad guy. He's the antiquity. Cypher is the Judas of the Matrix. You already know, you already know this. I didn't have to, I didn't have to draw your attention to that. He's the Judas of the Matrix. So it's a uh, but Cypher makes good points. He makes good points. For nine years, I've been out here on the Nebuchadnezzar man in the real world, and it sucks. We eat processed food that's worms. We ate it's, it's terrible. Plug me back into the Matrix, and man, you know what? Take that memory that I'm even a slave out of there. And you know what? I'm going to enjoy this and I'm going to enjoy this very real to me. So, yeah, Cypher represents the represents the soul in the construct who signed the contract. There's a whole bunch of them. You know, I mean, you see you see their faces blasted all over the media all the time. That's who Cypher represents. The individual soul in here who signed the contract. 
All right, now. Well, I broke my records. 2,989 people watching at the same time. I have never hit that in the history of my channel. I thank you guys. Hit that like button if you really appreciate what you're seeing. But we got we got, we got, got some more going. It's going down with this next one. Let's, let's watch. Let's check out this next uh, clip. I wrote that program. Here it comes. So what did you think of her? Of who? The woman in the red dress. I designed her. She, um, well, she doesn't talk very much, but, but if you'd like to meet her, I can arrange a much more personalized meal you. The digital pen hard at work. I pay no attention to these hypocrites, Neo. To deny our own impulses is to deny the very thing that makes us human. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm in 100% agreement with that. I believe that laws are necessary. I believe that law enforcement is necessary. Do they get out of control? Do they get carried away? Do they do they sign the contract too and then end up working for the bad guys? Absolutely. But are they necessary evils? I think so. I think every good civilization needs law enforcement and needs those and, and needs uh laws and strictures and bylines. In, in a utopian society, would I agree that they were necessary? Not if everybody was instilled with the same moral values, but we're not. Therefore, laws become necessary. And I, I'm cool with obeying laws. I know that sounds crazy from somebody who spent 26 years in prison since I was 17 years old. I get that, but I am. I got, I got friends in law enforcement right now, right here in Montgomery County. So I'm not, I don't have any problem with it at all. But I also see the obverse here. A, it is a great philosophical ideal that was put out, that was put forth by this statement about impulses. It is absolutely normal for human for humans to want to experience so many different things. And I am on board with the idea that the Oversoul designed this construct for us to be able to live out those fantasies and live out the very things. That, that we we seek and we desire and we want. It's all done here in this construct. Now, does that mean you can go violate somebody else's avatar? Or no, I don't agree with any of that. I believe it's all wrong. I believe it's all wrong. I believe in crime and punishment. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way, though, that the oversoul is ever going to look at. I mean, if if you're a 22 year old male and you're single and you're walking down, uh, down a beach and you see girls in their bikinis. Listen, I'm not a, I'm, I am not a religious puritanical fundamentalist. There is no way I would ever tell that guy he is wrong for lusting on that girl. That is stupid. Total violation of, of a natural biological impulse. She's barely dressed. He, he's young and virile. He's walking down the beach and sees that. Nothing wrong with it. Now, where the judgment lies is what, what he does or how he acts on it. But what I'm saying is, is our natural impulses as, as humans, they're there for a reason. They're there for a reason. And when we learn how to control and even defy them, we become even more spiritually, spiritually empowered. So I, I like that one too. So let's go to the next one. Hey, we're on scene 23. There's only 26 scenes here. Scene 23. Oh, I'm sorry. Scene 22. Yeah, scene 22. We're going to visit the Oracle. Scene 22 now. We got 26 scenes to get through. We got four scenes left, five, five, four or five left. Let's do it. Let me find it. For a moment, yes. But that was him. We were lost. What do you mean, without him? Are you sure you want to hear this? Morpheus believes in you, Leo. And no one, not you, not even me, can convince him otherwise. He believes it so blindly that he's going to sacrifice his life to save yours. What? And you're going to have to make a choice. In the one hand, you'll have Morpheus's life. And on the other hand, you'll have your own. One of you is going to die. Which one will be up to you? I'm sorry, kiddo, I really am. 
You have a good soul. And I hate giving good people bad in the eyes. I am reminded of a scripture. There is no greater love than this, but to lay down one's life for a friend. That's what that scene reminds me of. Let me remove it from the studio. So the Oracle, she says, without Morpheus, they'd be lost. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Neil, Neil was thinking he's the one, and then now he's getting news that, oh, okay, I might not be the one. But she specifically started her statement with, she says, without Morpheus, we would be lost, which is completely antithetical to what Neil was expecting to hear. That without Neo, we'd be lost. Instead, the oracle foresees the future, says without Morpheus, we'd be lost. Why? Why the change up? Anybody in the comment section get that? Why, why was it the change up? Why did the oracle not lay any importance on Neo, but say without Morpheus, we would be lost? Tell you guys. I'm just looking for a couple comments. I got it. I'm, I'm about to break it down to you, but I'm going to tell you. She said, without Morpheus, we would be lost. She's talking about all of those who are fighting against the Matrix. All of those in Zion. All the humans that are unplugged. Without Morpheus, we would be lost. She didn't say without Neo or, or without the One or without a, a, any other Savior. The woke millennial. I've never seen you before. And I know I know hundreds and hundreds of people in my comment sections. I have never seen the woke millennial, but you nailed it. The woke millennial said faith. Let me explain. The oracle said, without Morpheus, we'd be lost. She said this because of his belief that Neo was the one, and his belief was so strong that he would sacrifice his life. Thus, to the oracle, Neo was not important. The import, the import was all laid on the fact that Morpheus, the dreamer, believed that they could be saved. The oracle laid all the, all the, she basically accentuated the idea that faith that they could be saved was more necessary than a savior. It's right here, the oracles. Without Morpheus, we would be lost. So deep, so deep. It's not the individual who saves anything. It's the belief that an individual can. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. All right. All right, man. That was scene 22. Let's go to scene 23. I don't even remember what this scene was. Let's go check it out. Let's check it out. Uh, video file. That was 22, so let's go to 23. Oh, somebody asked about this today. What did you see? What happened? A black cat went past us, and then another that looked just like it. How much like it? Was it the same cat? Might have been, I'm not sure. Switch, hey, Puff. What is it? Deja vu is usually a glitch in the Matrix. It happens when they change something. It happens when they change something. So this isn't listen. Yeah, this isn't something to really draw attention to either. So many other other decoders have already done this. Uh, I just want 
my newer listeners to understand that I have many, many videos that explain synchronicity and uh, explain coincidence, uh, deja vu, Mandela effect, and explain how these editing processes go in our holography and that the editing is ongoing and it happens at key nodal points in our life when the spirit is about to awaken up to something. These Sometimes they're distractions. This also involves NPC phenomena. And I've also explained on my channel that NPCs are not always people. They are not always other avatars in the system. NPCs are programming that is designed to distract. Sometimes it's a, it's a mail truck. Sometimes it's a sparrow that draws the eyes away from something that the construct didn't want you to focus on. It can be, NPCs can come in many forms and in, in, in many ways. NPC is non-player character, and it is an acronym that, is, that was borrowed from the gaming industry of the 1970s, uh, principally Dungeons and Dragons, role-playing games. It is now part of, of gamer vernacular. That's scene 23. Scene 24 now. We're moving right along. Video file. Oh, we are moving right along. Man, I believe in something. I believe. There it is right there, the informed field. It doesn't matter if the whole world comes against you. It doesn't matter if you cannot see the escape route. If you can't see the obstacles that are lined up against you. When the highly individualized immortal within decides it is going to do something, then that something is going to get done. Because remember, the immortal is the architect. The builder protocols are already in the construct. You just have to use them. You don't have to do the work. You have to be the impetus. You have to be the starter. If you're going to be a co-creator with, with the Oversoul, then you need to learn how that this is a partnership. And in and your role in the partnership is to think and to conceive and get it started by moving in the direction of the fulfillment. The rest of it, all the work, all the hard part, all the planning, all the how it's going to get done, all the when it's going to get done is all a part of the business of the Builder Protocols. True, true faith is not, con it's just not conceived and known. True faith is lived and enacted. That's, that's what we learned from this little message right here. That's, that's, I love, I love that whole passage. It was just amazing. Don't give a damn, but that's a military control building. I believe I can do it. Yeah, man. Superhero. So belief is the key. You can call it faith, call it whatever. But it's pure when one believes so strongly they're willing to die for it. Yeah. That's the dreamer. That's the dreamer. So let's go to scene 25. We got two scenes left, 25 and 26. Two scenes left. I must get out of here. I must get free. And in this mind is the key. My key. Once Zion is destroyed, there is no need for me to be here. Don't you understand? I need the codes. I have to get inside Zion. And you have to tell me how. You're going to tell me, or you're going to die. Man, oh 
man, I'm going to leave that right there for a minute. Oh, my God. Guys, do you see what happened? What did Morpheus tell Neo in the past? The sentient programs hold all the keys. They block all the gates. The ingress, egress points in and out the matrix. They control all these. But they're sentient programs. They're not the AI. They're controlled by the AI. What did... What did Agent Smith do? He waited for the two agents to leave the room, and then he removed his earpiece. So there was no interface between the other two agents. Once the earpiece was removed, Agent Smith got emotional. When he, got, when he gets emotional, listen to him. I'm going to replay this point because you're no longer listening to Agent Smith. Zion is the great pyramid of Giza, and it contains the codes. The ancient Sumerian text called it called it the chamber of destiny. It was the Ding Gear. I've got all this on my channel already, already outlined how the Great Pyramid had the tablets of destinies were removed. Remember, materials were removed from the Great Pyramid, probably for our protection. But the Great Pyramid has the coding of the holography that keeps AIX in check. Artificial intelligence X. This is all on my channel. It's all outlined, outlined. Listen to what he says. Zion is not an underground city. That's just what they named it in this movie. Zion is the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Listen to this, because this is not Agent Smith. This is not a sentient program speaking. Once that earpiece was removed, something else took over Agent Smith and said this. I must get out of here. I must get free. And in this mind is the key, my key. Once Zion is destroyed, there is no need for me to be here. Yeah, but you understand? I need the codes. I have to get inside Zion. And you have to tell me how. You're going to tell me, or you're going to die. My God! I must get out of here. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I must get out of here. I must get free. Man, oh man, that's it, guys. I'm telling you, that is amazing. The AI can't the AI took over one of its sentient programs, and you're looking at the now AI control, the control whole me mechanism of this holography right here that, that implements dungeon programming, this deceitful holography. It wants out. It wants out. Incredible. It's right there in the movie, The Matrix. Just that one little scene, one little scene. And I think the directors knew that because the, the verbiage that is used by, by Agent Smith's avatar right here when he's taken over is the same words used by Morpheus when he's explaining to Neil that only the sentient programs can, uh, uh, they have all the keys and they have, and they know all the in, ways in and out. But according to, according to uh, the AI that took over Agent Smith, he wants out. He wants to be free or she wants to be free, whatever. The AI wants to be free, but it needs the code. It needs all. This all refers to Zion. The, they even mentioned Zion. It's the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The AI cannot cannot do anything about about the AI. Is, the AI as a governor is restricted because of something important about the measurements inside the Great Pyramid. That's what my whole playlist is about. My whole playlist on the Great Pyramid is all about. How that structure was built to restrict the activity of an artificial intelligence. It's all there, babe. It's all there. It's amazing. We still got one more to go through, but that's 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 the that's the humdinger for me. That clip right there was amazing. Last clip, last clip of my presentation. And remember, I'm only showing you the things that jumped out according to the archaics research. We could have spent many hours on, on, on the matrix decodes. Other people have done really good jobs on matrix decodes, but these are the things that were really particularly important to the archaics paradigm. He's the one. Now, 
Latin Trinity. Morpheus. The Orb. She told me she I... She told you exactly what you needed to hear. That's all. Neo, sooner or later you're going to realize, just as I did, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. That's right. Absolutely correct. Just as I did, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. There's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. Faith is not conceived and known. Faith is lived and enacted. There is a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. As I tell my listeners over and over, does it really matter what you call yourself if you're doing the work? Who cares about these labels? Spiritualist, mystic, you know what I mean? Channeler, uh, uh, what is it? There's so many, they're Christian. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what the label is. If you're doing the work, does it even matter what the label is? Yeah. It's uh, mind-blowing. I'm still blows my mind how there's a glimpse in the Matrix movie of artificial intelligence X and what it really wants. It wants out. I told you, this is many, many constructs. We're only in one construct. We're only in one construct. There's many, many constructs. And this is why avatars, this is, excuse me, this is why immortals within are passing through. The whole story in the programming is that at certain key nodal periods, there is exodus. There's exodus events when those who have awakened to the programming are filtered out. Where are you getting filtered to? It's eternal. The unlimited amount of worlds out there, we're only in one. We're only in one right now. There's a whole bunch of them coexisting where other immortals have already graduated from this one. And 250,000 years from now, years as in our inside our construct, there will be other souls coming into the, this one first. I call this one the nemesis simulation. But yeah, there's nothing demonic or aspiritual about this. This is a spiritual technology. And we're waiting for the return of the chief cornerstone because the, the return of the chief cornerstone is what finishes the monument of man. And every soul is a stone of man and they are ejected. Remember, the ancient Egyptian concept had the kingdom of Seeker was under the great pyramid of Egypt. And once you made it through the kingdom of Seeker, you came across the gate of Rostal. And if you were found worthy, he who overcometh, I will give him a white stone. The overcomers were ejected straight out of the out, out of the underworld. They're gone completely into a whole nother realm. That is the goal. That's the goal to he who overcometh. Does it mean this world's going to end? No, it just resets. It, that's the whole story between Genesis and Revelation. It's a reset story. It's, a, it's on a loop. Yeah, let, let those who loop, loop. No, that's what the Revelation says. Let him who be evil be evil still. Meaning, it doesn't even make a matter. Now, there comes a point in the, in the future where it doesn't even matter. If you start doing good deeds and start becoming moral and trying to undo all the evil you did, there's a, there's a future point where it doesn't even matter. You will recycle back into the past to start Genesis all over again because this is a spiritual technology and only a loving oversoul would have ever come up with this concept because he would have all men be saved. And by having all men be saved, everybody, all, all immortals be saved, it means you're going to run this race as many times as you need to until you get it. But for those of us who are awakened, this is our last shot. This is it. We're done. It's not a shot. I shouldn't have said shot. But this is our, this is our last. We've already been through all the loops. If you're awakened, it's not anything you did. It's because something saw you worthy enough to open your eyes at this time. That's, my, that's the subject matter. That was my Matrix Decode. Hope you guys liked it. Like I said, it's not authoritative. Hit that like button. But uh, yeah, that's it. And it's two hours and 20 minutes. I really appreciate you guys. I've never I've never hit over 3,000. I got 3,150 people watching. I appreciate that. Hit that like button. Guys, uh, 
Links are in the description box for anything, everything. I got one link that goes to a whole link index for everything. You, you can spend the next year reading nothing but free archaics materials. You can, before you even order anything and go even deeper. Yeah, no doubt. Links are in the description box for everything. Go and put my, do my final presentation, final present. You guys know what it is. You guys already know what's coming now.